I'd like to talk to you about ionic equations. Now, an ionic equation is an equation that shows the ions that are actively participating in a reaction. If we think back to our types of equations, we would remember that we start off with our worded equation based on the names for each reactant and each product we generate our molecular equation. Now from our molecular equation we're going to be able to deduce our ionic equation. Now in order to write ionic equations we have to follow a few steps. Okay so these are our steps for writing ionic equations. Now the first thing you have to ensure that you do is you write your balanced molecular equation. If you don't have your balanced molecular equation, then your ions are not going to be balanced. And you must ensure that you include your state symbols. This is key. If you don't include the state symbols, you're not going to be able to do your ionic equation properly. So you have to make sure that you include your state symbols. Now, once you write your balanced molecular equation, you have to go ahead and identify all the compounds that are in aqueous solution. Once you've identified all the compounds that are in aqueous solution, you're going to split them up. What are you splitting them up into? You're splitting them up into their respective ions. So you're going to split up aqueous compounds into their respective ions. So, if you think about it, when you were writing the formula for the ionic compound, you would have taken the ions, the formula for the cation, the formula for the anion, and you would have put them together to get the formula for the compound. Now, what you're doing is you're going to look for the compounds that are aqueous. This is key. has to be aqueous. Okay, and we're going to take those aqueous compounds and we're going to split them up into their respective ions. So it's almost like we're now going backwards. Once we have split up the aqueous compounds into their respective ions, we're going to identify what are called spectator ions and we're going to remove them. If you think about a spectator, a spectator is something, someone who is watching could be a spectator at a football match or a cricket match or, the, or at a basketball game. A spectator is someone who is watching but is not participating. So what we're going to do is we're going to look for our spectator ions and we're going to remove them. That means we're looking for ions that are not actively participating. We're looking for ions that are the same on the reactant side as they are on the product side and we're going to remove those ions and it's that simple those are the three basic steps we write our balanced molecular equation making sure that we have the correct state symbols then we split up the compounds that are in aqueous solution into their respective ions. If something is not aqueous, we do not split it up. We do not trouble it. We leave it alone. Once we have split up all aqueous compounds into their respective ions, then we go ahead and we remove the spectator ions. So, let's look at an example. Let's say that we have sodium chloride 
and it's reacting with silver nitrate now this is a double displacement reaction so we expect that the sodium will go with the chlorine and the sodium will go with the nitrate okay so that's how we're going to figure out our products so we're going to get sodium nitrate plus silver chloride so that's our molecular equation now let's check to see if it's balanced we have one sodium on the left one sodium on the right one cl on the left one cl on the right one silver on the left one silver on the right one nitrate ion on the left and one nitrate ion on the right so our equation is balanced now we need to assign our state symbols remember in order to assign your state symbols you're going to use your solubility rule so all chlorides are soluble with the exception of silver chloride lead chloride so we know that automatically our sodium chloride is going to be aqueous silver chloride is the only exception so our silver chloride is going to be a solid now we have nitrates according to our solubility rule all nitrates are soluble okay so if all nitrates are soluble that means that our silver nitrate is going to be aqueous and our sodium nitrate is going to be aqueous okay so remember we assign our state symbols based on the solubility rules now that we have the compounds we know that we have our balanced molecular equation each compound is written along with its state symbol the next step is to split up aqueous compounds into their respective ions so this right here this right here represents our step one our balanced molecular equation complete with state symbols now we need to split up aqueous compounds into their respective ions so we're going to be splitting up our sodium chloride our silver nitrate and our sodium nitrate our silver chloride here is solid it's not aqueous and anything that is not aqueous doesn't matter the state it is once it's not aqueous we do not split it up we leave it alone okay so the ions that make up sodium chloride are sodium ions and those are in an aqueous state and Cl minus ions and those are also in an aqueous state. The ions that make up silver nitrate are silver ions, those are in an aqueous state and nitrate ions, those are also in an aqueous state. Those go, those combine to form sodium ions, which are aqueous, and nitrate ions, which are also aqueous. In addition to our last product is our silver chloride, and that silver chloride is solid. silver chloride is solid so now what we have here is we have what is called the total ionic equation the total ionic equation shows all the ions that are present in the reaction both the ions that are actively participating as well as the ions that are just spectators so this is our total ionic equation all right now the total ionic equation is not very useful for us 
but what it does do is it does provide us a means of getting to our desired ionic equation the ionic equation we desire is called the net ionic equation and the net ionic equation is the ionic equation that shows the ions that are actively participating so now we have to check both sides and we'll see what ions are spectators if we look at the left we have na plus ions in aqueous solution we also have na plus ions in aqueous solution on the right so there's no change in the sodium ions because there's no change in the sodium ions they are spectators and we can cancel them out now if we look at cl minus we have cl minus aqueous on this side but on the right side we see cl in the form of a solid so there has been a change in the cl so the cl is participating we're not going to trouble it the silver is ag plus aqueous on the left and again the ag is in a solid state on the right so we are not going to trouble that nitrate no3 minus on the left no3 minus on the right so that we can also cancel so our sodium ions and our nitrate ions are our spectator ions once we have removed our spectator ions we can go ahead and we write back the remaining ions so we have cl minus ions in aqueous solution ag plus ions in aqueous solution and those combine to give us silver chloride in the solid state this right here is our net ionic equation and whenever you're asked to write an ionic equation whether it is stated explicitly or not you are expected to write a net ionic equation that is what we want all right so these are the basic steps that you would follow in order to obtain your ionic equation you write your balanced molecular equation first once you have your balanced molecular equation you make sure you assign your state symbols once your state symbols have been assigned you go ahead and look for the compounds that are in aqueous solution the compounds that are aqueous you split them up into their respective ions make sure that each ion also has a state symbol so if the compound is aqueous the ions are also going to be in aqueous solution and then anything that is not aqueous we leave it alone we don't trouble it all right once we have assigned the ions for all aqueous compounds we look for spectator ions we look for ions that are unchanged we look for ions that remain the same on both sides of the equation and we remove them once we do that we end up with our net ionic equation I hope this was helpful.